Hey folks, in today's edition of Beta Bully, we're gonna look at some interesting discoveries I recently made. In today's episode, we'll be looking at Bully's UI throughout the development of the game. UI stands for User Interface, which refers to things such as the main menu, the in-game screen overlays like Jimmy's health bar, wanted level, weapon wheel, and so on. Basically anything you see on screen as far as indicators and menus go. Before we proceed, I just want to take this moment to point out that all of these designs were made by David Bayon, who I must definitely say did a terrific job. Although most of these designs would end up being scrapped entirely, they most definitely succeeded in capturing that unique feel that only Bully has. With all of that said and done, let's get to the designs, shall we? I believe that Bully's menu design went through at least four different iterations, and since there are no names to be found online, I've decided to name these myself based on their visual aesthetics and overall functionality. So, first and foremost, we have number one, Bulletin Board. This design was quite possibly the first one that Rockstar used when Bully was in early development. Sadly, only one image of it has ever surfaced online to my knowledge, so it's difficult to speculate on what it would have looked like outside of this one screenshot, but it appears to have had a very basic and compact design style to it. You had your controls on the right side and the content on the left, allowing the player to quickly browse different menus within this one page. The reason why I believe this to be the pause menu is because of the player's money being shown on the page, and as we know, this is only something that is possible through the pause menu, as opposed to the main menu, or any other menu for that matter. We have a standard X to exit button on the bottom right, ostensibly four different pages to browse including inventory, stats, controls, and audio display settings. If we look on the left then we can see a page of stats, meaning that we're most likely on the stats page. And if you still don't believe me, then just take a look to the right and you'll notice that yes, we are indeed on the stats page. On the stats section, we have a total of seven stats to go through, and they go as follows. Bike air jumps, 10. Bike jump distance, 10. Slingshot hits, 15. Punches thrown, 99. Punch connected, 2. Must be a really bad boxer. Bike stolen, 59. Holy shit. Under what fucking circumstances could you possibly find yourself in where it's like required of you to steal 59 bicycles? And total detention, 20. It also appears as though Jimmy is carrying $39 on him. As more and more progress was being done on the game, Rockstar also had to decide on what visual aesthetic they wanted Bully to have. Were they gonna go for a more comic book-esque style in similar fashion to that of the concept art of the game, or would they go for a more basic 3D GTA style game only with a school theme this time around, or will they try to go for something a bit more polished? Eventually, Bully would end up with a fairly unique blend of all three aforementioned styles. And during this time of development, Rockstar also made several major changes to the UI. And thus, we enter the Grey Locker phase, a more cartoony and grunge-like design. It consists of very basic controls, a pretty major absence of information in terms of navigating the menus, along with a lack of stats that would subsequently make an appearance in a later UI design we'll get to in just a moment. This design also happened to contain a shit ton of juicy character concept art. While the design consisted of a lot of things that served as nice little details, the details perhaps felt a bit overwhelming. While an abundance of detail can help in giving your UI a unique and memorable feel, it can also become an obstacle for the player if you use too much. By the way, this is all speculation based on a very small amount of evidence, mind you. I have zero experience or knowledge within this field, so I want to remind you to take my speculation with a grain of salt. Scratch that, a, a fucking truck full of salt. More salt than Paul's fucking ego. The image file you're looking at is entitled lockers.jpg. The image consists of a bunch of lockers, presumably located somewhere from within the school. One of the lockers is open, revealing a couple of books, a pen, and some paper taped to the back side of the door. One of the papers is a print of a very early concept art of a female student who is believed by many to actually be Christy Martin. And Rockstar being Rockstar, they of course slapped their big sexy fat ass logo on one of the lockers. It's kind of like a dog pissing on its own doghouse. You understand why they would do it, but it's completely unnecessary. But you know, you, you gotta mark your territory, right? Weird analogy aside, there's really not much else to note about this image as its purpose is pretty much unknown, and by pretty much I mean completely. If you guys have any ideas as to what this was intended for, make sure to leave your thoughts and speculations in the comment section below. If I were to venture a guess, I'd just say that this was used as a backdrop for menu navigation. 
Here we have the stats menu where the player could browse their achievements and overall progress. On both sides of stats we have a set of concept arts for different female click members. On the top right we have Mandy, on the mid right we have Christy as we saw before, on the bottom right we have Zoe, on the middle left we have what could possibly be either Pinky or a student that ended up being scrapped from the game. And on the bottom left we have Beatrice who at this point in development was named Amy. On the stats menu, we can also see how much money the player has along with a list of different stats. It also appears as though the player is on the bottom of the stats list, so it's likely that a ton of other stats would have been visible had they scrolled up a bit. The stats we can see are as follows. Bike air jumps, 10. Bike jump distance, 10. Slingshot hits, 15. Punches thrown, 99. Punch connected, 2. Still a shitty fighter. Bike stolen, 59. Total detention, 20. If you were to look on the stats and compare them to the bulletin board design, then you'll notice that nothing has changed aside from Jimmy apparently either spending or losing $7 somehow. Here we have the inventory page. Now this is where things get really, really interesting. Here we have a total of 8 different inventory items, and as the label entitled Inventory would suggest, this served as the menu where the player could have a look through their inventory items, including weapons and quite possibly mission related items and pickups. First, we have an apple. Pretty self explanatory. Second, we have what appears to be a brick. This could mean that Rockstar initially planned on having the player be able to pick up and store bricks and apples in their inventory, much like eggs, firecrackers, and stink bombs. And next to the brick, we have a firecracker. Not much else to say about this one. We also have a fire extinguisher, which tells us that fire extinguishers were also something that Jimmy would be able to store in his inventory. It's possible that Rockstar decided to make the fire extinguisher a non-inventory weapon based on its kind of unfair powerful functionality. For one, you have an infinite amount of ammo, which stuns opponents. You then have an endless durability, which allows Jimmy to get a clean hit on his opponents no matter how much they try to block. It's simply a weapon way too powerful to allow the player to simply just store in their inventory freely. Much like the sledgehammer, or the poison gun. I have no idea what the fuck this thing is, but it could possibly be a very early version of the bottle rocket launcher, judging from the fireworks that appears to be attached to, uh... Whatever the hell this thing is. If this really is the rocket launcher, then Rockstar probably gave it a complete redesign due to how confusing and bulky it looks. Right next to whatever the hell we just looked at, we have what appears to be a trash can lid. And like the fire extinguisher, this is an unbreakable weapon, making it a bit too powerful for the players to simply just store in their inventory. And next to the trash can lid, we have what appears to be a quite possibly far more powerful and dangerous weapon. A pipe wrench. A motherfucking pipe wrench. I have no idea why Rockstar decided to remove this weapon from the game, but it's likely that it simply didn't serve much of a purpose outside of combat. How and where you would find this thing probably would not fit most situations that the player would find themselves in during missions. And finally, we have a very early concept of the spud gun. Some have reported seeing this in-game and former magazine issues and early screenshots of the game. I have yet to confirm this, nor deny it, so uh, for now... Me. I'll make sure to make a video covering the development and the evolution of the spot gun soon, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Below these icons we have a piece of placeholder text that would most likely be replaced by the selected item on the screen. Let's say you selected the apple. This piece of text would then be replaced with a brief description of the apple, just like in the official game. We can also see a drawn version of the Academy's old logo. This logo can actually still be spotted in-game during earnest speech during the mission The Candidate. I feel your pain. Now this is where things get a bit fucking confusing. As you can tell, we're looking at what appears to be an options menu for controller settings. This is quite possibly a screenshot of a pause menu placeholder from when the game was in its very early development stages. The reason why I believe this to be the case is because of how basic and lacking this appears to be in detail as far as the actual controllers go. The controls here are very basic and lacking in functionality. You have basic shit like grabbing, punching, shooting, jumping, moving, running, pausing the game, and sniper view. Sniper view was most likely a different term for the first person mode that would later end up being scrapped from the game. It appears as though there was a second page, it's possible that the second page would have contained either more information on on foot controls or vehicle controls. Aside from giving the player a rundown on the control scheme of the game, they would also ostensibly be able to adjust display settings as well as audio settings. Remember the image of the lockers I mentioned earlier? You don't? God damn it, Greg, it was like five minutes ago. All right, well, the rest of you remember, this is possibly a different variation of that backdrop. It's likely that each and every single different menu had its own locker-themed backdrop. 
In an attempt to keep confusion at a minimal, let's have a look at the audio settings menu as it appears that the player has already selected that option in this menu. Here we have the audio settings. As you can tell, there really weren't that many settings to be adjusted. Not that there really is in the official game either. And even those settings are kind of not working. Oh, you want to turn off the in-game music? Alright. Alright. It's been two minutes. Now it's back. For no fucking reason at all. Here, have some music, even though you don't want it. Anyway, you have the standard sound effects and music volume adjusters, along with an audio output adjuster. The player would use the left and right joysticks or D-pad buttons to browse the settings and X to leave the settings menu, presumably saving the adjusted settings. And so, we move on to the third design. Number three, basic blue and yellow. Blue and yellow had a minimal design look, and much like the aforementioned Grey Locker UI, it's likely that this UI was recognized as another basic placeholder for testing and development purposes. It's also possible that this was an attempt by Rockstar at a more direct and simple design that they eventually gave up on. The reason why I believe that this UI came after the Grey Locker one is because this one featured far more controls than the Grey Locker design did. Controls which we'll get to in just a moment. Blue and yellow still stuck to the visual aesthetic that Bully's logo and backdrop had, but in a more basic and minimalistic fashion, as opposed to the cartoony and comic book-esque feel that the Grey Locker design had. When navigating menus, the player would see a nice Bullworth Academy desk cover with the menu content layered above it. The blue backdrop behind the desk cover would also change based on which menu you were on. This is presumably the first thing that the player would have been faced with upon starting the game. There's a few things worth noting here. The first thing that captivated my attention was the fact that this menu design uses a very early version of the Bully logo. The very same logo that was used in the early promotional screenshots of Bully. This logo would eventually be slightly adjusted to a thicker and more vibrant look, presumably in an effort to make it stand out more. There's really not much else to say about this design aside from the very cool 3D version of the Bullworth Academy Crest logo, which I actually used for a video quite recently. So HA! I've been keeping on to this information for ages and you've all been none the wiser. Retardation aside, it feels like something that would've been used as a band logo in the School of Rock. Not quite sure why, but maybe it's because it's kinda grungy and, you know, school themed. I don't fucking know. And here we have the photo album page. On this very page we have some exclusive and never before seen by the public images in this album. Four of them are pretty dimly lit, so let's increase the brightness a bit. On the bottom left we have the official promo screenshot of Jimmy using a running punch move on a prefect. There's not much to say about this one since it has already been released officially over a decade ago. So suffice to say that I don't think we need to discuss this one at this point. I think people have talked about it enough. At least for now. The following image on the right is one that was never released and does contain some very blurry but interesting information. Here we see Jimmy Hopkins in his original beta uniform, being chased by what appears to be a greaser, quite possibly Hal. This screenshot was possibly taken in new commentary, and if it was, then it's also likely that this image contains removed new commentary assets. On our right, we have a nice but kind of awkward image of Jimmy admiring the view on top of a building. It appears as though Jimmy is on top of the school, a feature that was intended to be in the game but later cut during development. Next up, we have an image of Jimmy riding his bike through town. I'm not quite sure where this picture was taken, so if any of you guys have any clues or ideas, let me know in the comment section. And finally, we have the first image ever released of Bully. Like the first image we talked about, this one has been discussed to fucking death. So let's just leave it at that, it's, it's, it's beta stuff. There you go, you like beta stuff, right? My assumption is that these screenshots served as temporary placeholders for testing purposes, most likely just to test out the camera saving feature. Now this is where things get really interesting. This is the control scheme menu where the player, just like in the official version, can see a rundown of the controls. A few things are worth noting here, the X button would be used for light attacks rather than sprinting. Meanwhile, the square button was used for heavy attacks. It's a possibility that Rockstar felt like having two buttons dedicated for fighting would be kind of redundant and possibly a bit confusing. So instead of having two buttons assigned for hand-to-hand -hand combat, they decided to simply assign a single button to that function, with holding down the button to trigger the heavy attacks. Both the circle and the triangle button served the same purpose as they did in the final version of the game. The social system was initially assigned to the right trigger 2 button as opposed to the left trigger 2 button. The button above it, that'd be the right trigger 1 button, would be used to reset the camera's position and to target enemies. 
Similar to the different attack buttons, it's likely that Rockstar felt like having two buttons used for this would be unnecessary, and instead decided to simply combine these two buttons into one targeting system that also brings up the social menu. The camera reset feature would later be assigned to the left joystick, which is used in the official game to look behind you. Speaking of which, the left joystick button was presumably only for what the right joystick button is used for now, which is player movement and crouching. They more than likely changed this because players probably reported that controlling the player felt a bit awkward with the left joystick. Meanwhile, the right joystick had a much more interesting purpose. It would not only be used for camera control, but also for a first person mode. It's possible that the first person mode would work in similar or possibly identical fashion to the first person mode in Manhunt. Keep in mind that Bully borrowed a ton of assets and features from previous Rockstar games including Manhunt. So it really wouldn't be that surprising if Rockstar initially felt like this feature would have been not only cool or flashy for Bully, but also possibly a useful feature for stealth-related missions. But that Rockstar eventually decided to scrap it once they realized how useless the feature really was. But the exciting beta content does not end there. The D-pad initially served a much different purpose. Instead of being used as a method of browsing different task classes, jobs, challenges, and missions, it was initially intended to be a way for the player to browse through music. I'm not quite sure what Rockstar had in mind here, but it's possible that they imagined the player browsing through a catalog of different songs as they played around in free roam and possibly during missions as well. The music player controls here is oddly misspelled as mustic player controls. It's likely that left and right on the D-pad would have been used to browse different songs while up and down would serve as the volume control, or possibly vice versa. The left trigger 1 button was meant to be used for sprinting and special. I'm not quite sure what Rockstar meant when they say special. You think you're special. If you guys have any ideas or speculations as to what this would have been used for, then feel free to let me know in the comment section. You see, I help you, you help me. That's how we fucking do this shit. That's fucking community effort right there, bitch. You know, it's not just up to me, Nathan, Simon Bestia, and Deadpool. There's tons of other people involved, and you can be one of them. The left trigger 2 button would have been used for the weapon selection feature. This feature would later be assigned to two other buttons as a way for the player to browse the weapon wheel back and forth, offering a more precise and effective method of selecting weapons. Imagine that you have 10 different weapons in your inventory. You're on weapon number 1, but you want to select weapon number 7. Say that you start browsing towards weapon number 7, but you accidentally press the weapon button one too many times. So you're like, oh shit, I'm on weapon number 8 now. What you probably would have to do in this case would be to browse past weapon 8, 9, 10, back to 1, and up towards 7 again, in hopes that you wouldn't fuck it up this time. So let's say you're fighting somebody and you're like, oh shit, better switch to weapon number 10. Well, you wouldn't be able to switch to that particular weapon unless you decided to quickly press the weapon select button 9 times, and by that time you could have possibly already had your ass handed to you by your enemy. If this was the case, then it most likely annoyed players during intense situations where individuals were attacking Jimmy and weapon Weapon switching was crucial and a clunky part of the fight. Selecting weapons would eventually be assigned to the left trigger 1 button and the right trigger 1 button, allowing the player to switch back and forth. The select button was originally used as a select button, but it would eventually be assigned as a quick way of accessing the in-game map. It appears as though the player is currently on the on-foot section of the controls menu, which leaves us not knowing what the vehicular controls were like. And thus, we move on to the final design, the one that would eventually be used for the game. And that is number 4, Blue Comic Book. Eventually, Rockstar would land on the design that we all know and have familiarized ourselves with over the years, that'd be the Blue Comic Book. And the reason why I think Rockstar eventually landed on this design is due to how easy it is to navigate. As soon as you hit the pause button, you're faced with a list of easily navigatable settings. The backdrop consists of a sample of the Bully comic book, slightly faded and nicely blending in behind the menu text above it. While not as visually captivating as its predecessors, it's a simple and easily navigatable design. So what did we learn today, folks? Well, we learned that number one, Bully originally had a first-person mode, also referred to as Sniper View. Number two, the controls were vastly different. Number three, the UI design went through at least four different revisions. Number four, there was originally a music player that could be controlled. Number five, light and heavy attacks were assigned to two different buttons. Number six, apples, bricks, this thing, the fire extinguisher, trash can lids, and wrenches could be stored in the inventory. Before we say goodbye, I like to remind you guys that the next episode of Bully Beta will be up on 
on this channel next week on Friday at midnight. That'd be Central European motherfucking summertime, bitch. C-E-S-T. Make sure to catch that shit when it goes live because it'll be awesome, I promise you that. I'm not gonna reveal what the topic will be, but I'll just say this. It's a feature that people want to see in Bully 2. And no, it's not multiplayer, it's something else. But something really, really cool, I promise you that. And as I mentioned on my last stream, I will be streaming myself speedrunning Bully every Saturday at 11pm. Same time zone as the video being uploaded. Anyway, that's it for me. Hey folks, have a good one. Peace. Oh hey, look, it's an after video thing. In case you'd like to learn more about what this game would've been like had it not been for Rockstar making some last minute changes, then I'd urge you to check out my Bully Beta Boy Storm Analysis video. So if you're interested in Bully 2 related news or simply content surrounding the first game, then subscribing is always an option. So yeah, there's, there's that. Bye!